chamber music is all about intimacy, it's about the dialogues in between instruments, it's about the colour of the instruments blending with each other, and it's about sound as well, understanding of the sound in between musicians. And before the Western influence came in, there's also a whole wealth of repertoire, there's Jiangnan Si Zhu, there's um, Cantonese music as well. Those are some of the genres that are more commonly heard in Singapore when they talk about traditional Chinese music. And we also will be showing an example of um, Cantonese music, and there's Niao Tou Lin. So a lot of Chinese music is programmatic in the sense that it is describing a story, or it might be describing a scenery of sorts or following on a character, on a journey, or a love story. And for this piece, Niao Tou Lin, we actually hear the birds, and we actually can imagine the mountains in a specific time of day that I will leave to the imagination of the listeners. early Chinese ensemble pieces where there is a clear indication of melody line, the accompaniment, there is this sort of um, texture where instruments have a specific role to play. Are you the, the melody at this point of time? Are you the accompaniment at this point of time? And that get, gets reflected in sort of a whole period and era of scores. There's also been a lot of exciting kind of developments in Chinese music nowadays. Um, for me personally, um, I take kind of influences from listening to all these pieces um, growing up. Whether I like it or not, it will make its way into my music as well. And I also have my own influences like film music and game music or all sorts of music that surround me and that has found its way into my own music and not only for me but a lot of living composers writing for Chinese ensemble as well.